Good morning, Christ Community Church. Okay, so we are the praise team, and we are here to lead you all into worship. Please stand with us. Join us as we worship our awesome, incredible King. God. We worship an awesome God. He is the God over everything. He is all-powerful, all-knowing, and he has invited us into relationship with him. 
And all, he did all the work. All we have to do is accept it as a gift, because that's what it is. It's a gift of salvation. And we just accept it, and then we just surrender to him and, and, and read his word and talk to him daily. He will guide us. He will lead us. You will see his hand at work in your life. And it's exciting. It's uh, inspiring to see his hand moving in your life. Amen. So we're going to keep worshiping the Lord. We're going to sing how, about his awesomeness. Come on, let's clap. emphasize how we who have trusted Jesus, we who have given our lives to the Lord, are to submit to him because we belong to him. 
The Bible says that we were bought at a price, and that price was Jesus' blood. And so we belong to God, and, and it says um, that we are to honor him with our life, our life as a living sacrifice, because that's our reasonable service. Like Jesus was a li literal sacrifice, you know, he died on the cross, but he got up and raised and defeated death for us so that we don't have to be afraid of death, that we know that we will live to forever with God when we leave this earth. We just have to, we're just called to live our lives as a sacrifice to him. And when we do that, there's fulfillment in that, that there's joy in that because we're fulfilling the purpose for what we, we were made. You know, if a um, fork is trying to scoop up soup, it's going to be dissatisfied, right? Because <laughs> the soup is going to just leak through. But when you get it to, like, stab a piece of meat, <laughs> then it's doing its job, right? And that's us. So we're going to sing I Belong to You. by a love I can't explain. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me, Lord. And now you have me. And I'm forever changed. And I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. Now I surrender. I surrender, my life is not my own. Yeah. 
for your long suffering, for that your long suffering, for your forbearance, Lord God, that you do not count us, Lord God, as unrighteous, Lord God. You do not see the iniquity, Lord, the stains, Lord God, on us, Lord God, but because of Jesus, because he made a way through his cross, through his death, through his burial, and his resurrection, Lord God, and we stand in him today. We stand, Lord God, upon the promise, Lord God, that you are our God, Lord God, and that we have you, Jesus, has made a way, Lord God, for us to have right, be right standing with you and right relationship with you, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you see us as righteous because of Jesus. You see us as pure because you see his son standing in our place, standing, Lord God. You see us as wearing robes of white, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord, that you have separated our sin as far as the east is from the west, Lord God. That you have cast our sin, Lord God, away into the sea, Lord God, that we stand here today. We stand here today free. We stand here today um, with joy in our hearts, Lord God. We stand here today with victory in our hands. We stand here today, Lord God, being able to praise you, Lord God. And we just pray that you would be high and lifted up in this place, Lord God. We pray for your glory, Lord God, to be seen in the hearts of man. Not so, Lord God, we can, you know, see you and admire you and go on our merrily way lord god but as your word says in the lord's prayer that we would learn to hollow your name that we would learn to count it as righteous to count it as and esteem it as worthy as good lord god that we would learn to praise your name and behold your name lord god and that it would you would dwell within our hearts that we would make room for you in our hearts lord god that you would take your place, Lord God, in our hearts, Lord God, that all the other rulers and powers and all the things that we place our hope in, social media, status, 
um, financial, our economic financial status, Lord God, that all the things that we place our hope in and our identity in, what other people think of us, our appearance, Lord God, that you, Lord God, will remove those things from us, Lord God, that you will begin to shape us and refine us more into your image, Lord God, create in us a new heart, a clean heart, so that we would see you, that we would thirst for you, Lord God, that our hearts would cry out for the things of God instead of the things of this world. Refine us, Lord God. We pray for a refining. We pray for purification, Lord God, that you would continue to perfect us and make us more like you, Jesus, so that when we stand before you, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Not depart from me, Lord God, that we will receive that crown of life for those who endure to the very end, Lord God. So we are here today to see you, to seek your face, to, to experience all of you, Lord God, and to be changed to be transformed so that we can be made more like you, Lord God. So have your way in this place, have, have your way in this place, have your way, way in our hearts, excuse me, and Lord God, I pray that you would be honored and glorified in all that we are and in all that we do. It's in your precious name we pray, amen. Amen, church family. Can we give God one more hand clap of praise? Well, first of all, I want to welcome anyone that may be coming for the first time um, to join us for service. Thank you so much for being a part of our service today. Also want to thank those of you that are viewing from home. Um, if, your, if this is your first time checking us out, thank you as well. We're so thankful um, and so grateful that you decided to worship with us. Our hope and our prayer for you is the same thing that we pray for ourselves. And that is we have come together to gather, to worship God, to commune with God, to connect with God because we need God. Uh, we're like the deer in Psalm 42 that thirsts for God, just like the deer thirsts for the water. So our soul, it thirsts, it pants after our God. And so we've come together so that we can connect with this God, commune with this God, worship this God, and meet this God. And we hope and we pray that you will have an encounter with the living God as we pray the same thing for ourselves. If you want to get more information about our ministry, uh, you can reach us either by going to our webpage, which is worshipccc.com. Um, or you can give us a phone call. Our phone number is 216-417-7958. Or you can always send us an email and just let us know that you're interested in learning more about the God that we worship or more about who we are. And we would love to connect with you. Our email address is info, that's I-N-F-O, at worshipccc.com. So God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, just a couple of announcements I want to make before we move on to the rest of our service. First thing um, is church family and friends. Thank you guys so much for your patience on today. Uh, we know that there's an activity going on over at the high school, and we know that parking is crazy. We know. Um, and so we appreciate your patience uh, with us. This is the last Sunday that are going to be having those events. We are in communication with the people that coordinate those events, so hopefully we can avoid these types of things in the future. But thank you so much for your patience. You never know what kind of obstacle you're going to have, and that we just appreciate you guys' flexibility, and we appreciate you guys pushing through, um, determining to make it to the house of the Lord, right, and to worship God. So thank you guys so much. But hopefully this won't be an issue moving forward, but we just want to say thank you uh, for being flexible. Uh, also, I want to let the ladies know at the service today, we're going to have a very important meeting with the ladies. Um, and so please, if you can, ladies, make sure you don't run out of here. Uh, but you can meet us upstairs in the fellowship area. Uh, meet us right in the fellowship area. We're going to meet there. We're not going to keep you long. We just want to share the results from the survey that we did. Thank you guys so much for filling out that survey. And just want to share with you guys uh, how we're going to move forward with our women's ministry. So ladies, please, after service today, make sure you stick around. Meet us in the fellowship area so that you can get the uh, feedback from the results, but then also uh, hear about our plans to move forward with the women's ministry. So we're really excited about what God is doing in and through our ladies. Also, next Sunday is a very important Sunday for us, um, and the reason why is because on next Sunday, we're going to celebrate 11 years of ministry. Can we give God a hand clap of praise for that? Thank God we've been around for 11 years, y'all, and we're really excited about this opportunity to celebrate um, the Lord and his faithfulness. And so we're going to do something a little bit special next Sunday. Uh, we're going to stick around after service, and we're going to break bread together. We're going to eat 
Uh, we got some activities planned for us. And uh, we just want to fellowship and just celebrate God again for his faithfulness over the span of 11 years. And so it's a very special moment for us. So I really want to encourage you, if you can, to make sure that you are in-house next Sunday for service. Uh, we just want to celebrate that moment with as many people as possible. So again, that's going to be next Sunday, immediately after service. Don't worry about lunch. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even think you got to really worry about dinner because we're going to feed y'all. Uh, and, uh, well, let me not oversell it. You're going to eat a little bit of something to hold you over to later that day. Uh, but y'all know how we do. We tend to feed our people. And so uh, please make sure that you stick around next Sunday after service and celebrate with us. You guys know we're not the type of church that keeps you in church all day. Uh, so when we do have something after service, it means it's something special to us and special to our, our ministry. Um, and by the way, thank you for all of you that went out to go witness Elijah Neville's baptism last Sunday. Can we give God a hand clap of praise for that? Thank you so much. We know it was the opening Sunday for the Browns. We know it was after service. We know you had to leave our facility to go south, to go to another facility. We know there was a lot of different dynamics involved with going to watch this young man get baptized. But I think you would agree with me that it was worth it. Uh, to be able to watch this young man give public testimony to his faith in Christ is something that's worth all the obstacles that were involved with it. So thank you guys so much for sticking around and being a part of that. Uh, speaking of our young people, on Thursday I sent an email out to all the parents of young people between the ages of uh, 13 and 18. On this Thursday, we're going to begin our youth group. We're really excited about that. And so we want to make sure that your parents, if you didn't get that email, come holler at me. Let me know you didn't get the email uh, so we'll, I can make sure you get all the information. Uh, but on this Thursday at 630, we're going to begin our youth group for our young people between the ages of 13 and 18, an opportunity for them to connect with other young people and also an opportunity for us uh, to do all that we can as their church family to pour into them and pour Christ into them, into them and help them grow in the fear and admonition of the Lord. So again, parents, please make sure you check your emails. If you didn't get the email, come talk to me. I'll give you all the information. But this Thursday at 630, uh, we're going to um, gather with our young people and do our youth group. If you have any questions, you can see me after service. I would love to answer any questions that you guys have. Also, we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, in the month of October, we're going to begin our marriage um, life group. Uh, and so we're really excited about that. Uh, we are going to have a meeting at the church for married folks uh, on the first Sunday in October, uh, just so you can hear about this life group. Uh, if you go to our webpage, worshipccc.com, and if you click on the fall 2022 ministry um, link, if you click on that, you can, you'll be able to download all the information about not only the marriage group, but also some other things that we're doing that we're going to be starting up in October as well. I don't want to go through every detail because I will lose you guys in, uh, in all the detail. I'm going to lose myself with all the details. I just encourage you to go to our webpage, worshipccc.com, click on uh, the 2022 fall ministry um, area, and uh, you can download the information about all that's taking place within the next few months here at Christ Community Church. How many of you guys know God is good? Uh, and God is doing some great things in it through our ministry. And we're really excited about what the Lord is doing, how God is using our ministry to impact this community. And uh, we're just so thankful, one, to be a part of his kingdom work. It is a blessing to be able to serve the Lord. Amen, somebody, right? By the way, all of us are called to serve, too. But it's even more of a blessing, number two, and really this is primarily, is more of a blessing to be a part of God's family. Uh, we serve because we love him. We serve out of our gratitude for all that he has done for us. And so it is a blessing to be able to call on him at any time on demand, call out to our father and know that we have access to him. Isn't it a blessing to know that when you call on God, that it's not a busy signal, that God is not like I'm occupied right now. God's not like, hold up, give me five minutes. God is not doing any of those type of things, right? When we call on the Lord, uh, he makes himself available. The older saints used to say, Jesus on the main line. Y'all know what the rest of it is, right? Tell them what you want. Just call them up, man. Uh, Y'all don't know the old school, huh? That's the old school right there. And so it's a blessing to know that we have that type of access to him. And not only do we serve out of our gratitude for all that God has done for us, but we also give. 
out of our gratitude because of all that God has done for us. And so we're going to transition, transition into our time of offering. And, um, and I just want to really prepare our hearts as we get ready to offer up to the Lord. Now, uh, we have a special music selection. They're going to come on out and start setting up um, as we prepare our hearts to give. Uh, but I, I just want to encourage us uh, to be uh, mindful of the fact that we give because he gave. Uh, one, of the, one of the most popular verses in the Bible is John 3.16. My brother's going to preach from John chapter 3 a little bit later on. You guys are going to be blessed by that. Looking forward to that. Uh, but John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he what? He gave. He wasn't stingy. He didn't hold back. He didn't keep back. The Bible says that God gave. And what? Scratch that. And who did God give? God gave his one and only son. Notice the emphasis. Not just us, son. We only know he only has one son, but to give the emphasis of how special this gift is that God gave, the Bible emphasizes that this is God's one and only son. God gave his very best so that you and I can receive salvation. Now, let me ask you guys a question. If God is a generous God and God gives us the very best, how would it look like for us to be stingy and to give God our minimum? I mean, wouldn't that be something? God gives us his best, and God is extremely generous to us, right? Has anybody here experienced the generosity of God? It has not God showered you with grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. I heard somebody say that God is not the God of a second chance. God is the God of a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, a thousand chance, right? Chance to the nth power, right? God is constantly giving us another chance. And he's constantly showering us with grace upon grace upon grace. I don't know how anybody can receive that quality, quantity of grace and not respond in generosity. We give out a, a spirit of generosity for all that God has done for us. And I want to encourage you, as we prepare our hearts to give, to give from that spirit. There are three ways that you can give to the ministry. You can give by going to our webpage again, worshipccc.com. Click on the Give tab, and you will get all the instructions of how you can give that way. You can also text the give. Just simply text CC, uh, text CCC Giving to 73256, and you can give that way. Or if you're in-house, you can give uh, to the greeter in the back. She'll make sure it goes to the appropriate place. Or if you're at home and you want to mail in your contribution, you can mail it to our physical location which is 2065 Lee Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, 44118. Uh, I'm going to pray for us, and then uh, they're going to bless us with a song, but I do want to encourage us as they sing and as they bless us in this song, please don't be a spectator. Uh, let's worship God together. And uh, they're going to sing a beautiful song in a beautiful way. And everything about this is just beautiful. Everything about this is beautiful, right? Uh, but I want to encourage us, don't just sit back. This is an opportunity for us to worship God as we are reflecting on our giving to the Lord. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love for us. We honor you, God. We praise you. We bless you. Uh, we pray, God, that you will receive this offering. We thank you for um, all that you've given to us. And God, as we offer up to you, Lord, we're not just offering up of our finances. We want to offer up of all, uh, Father. We want to give you all, all to Jesus. We surrender. Uh, all to him we freely give. May that be the sentiment and the spirit of this ministry. We bless you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're, gonna, we're about to sing a song that, that talks about how Jesus is our living hope. And yes, Jesus came and he shed his blood and he died on the cross, but he got up from, from that grave and he, was, he ascended to the Father and he sat at the right hand of the Father. And the really cool thing about that is that he sat down because his work was finished. The work is finished. There's no more work to be done. We just have to submit to it. And there's a line in the song that says, um, you, the, your art, the, you broke all the chains. And I was just thinking about that. Carmen and I were talking about that when we were rehearsing the song. That Jesus already broke the chains. Like we'd be like, Lord, break this chain. And we'd be singing, break the chain, break every chain or whatever. But God, he already broke the chains. What we're doing is we're learning how to live in freedom. The freedom is ours. Jesus did, did it already. It's done. It is finished, like he said on the cross. It is done. 
He has won it, and we're just learning how to walk in it. And we learn how to walk in it by walking in his spirit, by being in communion with him. He will let you know. He will tell you what to do. He will give you the scriptures out of his word to read that's going to speak to your spirit and your heart at the right time. But we got to trust him. We got to be coming to him because he's not going to, you know, necessarily be bugging us. He'd be like, I'm here. You know, I'm, I'm here. We got to pivot towards him and have our ears attuned to him. So. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the dark, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Oh, Jesus Christ, my Declare the grace. 
Amen. Christ is our living hope. Let's give God a hand clap of praise one more time. Uh, one of the ladies said something very profound. Um, she said that Christ has broke the chains already, which is, that's very profound, actually. Not many people know that, you know. And I was thinking as I was sitting there, I'm like, you guys have a great pastor. Pastor LaVert does a great job at delivering the word. You know, you, you could have one of those pastors who would be calling you up, like, I'm going to break the chain off of you. You'd be like there, just like, you know, shaking and jerking and just, you know, and, you know, uh, come on up, I'm going to deliver you and all this stuff. And he, you know, he does a great exegesis of the word. That's the thing that, that means the, the, the most, you know. So I thank God for Pastor LaVert. We can give God a hand clap for him. And... I see he is teaching you good as well because, you know, that's right. God has broken the change. We have to walk in that deliverance, you know. God has done it already. Well, last week, um, Pastor LaVert spoke about John 3.16. Now, in my opinion, 
This is the greatest verse in the entire Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I think this sums up the gospel in one verse. However, this verse was birthed out of a conversation between two people, Nicodemus and Jesus. So I'm going to go back a little bit, and I'm going to revisit that conversation. We're going to talk about that. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. Um, maybe on the screen, John chapter 3, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to it. We're going to read 1 through 6, and we, then we're going to jump down to verse 16. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, truly, truly, I said to you, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again and be born, can he? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now I'm going to skip down to verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us here today, Lord. Um, You said it's good for us to gather, Lord God, and and Paul said don't forsake the gathering together of of yourselves. We're here so we don't forsake each other, so we don't forsake gathering together. And you said with two or more gathered, in your name, you will be there in the midst, Lord God. So we say that it is in the name of Jesus that we are here, not for show, not for um, a social club, but we are here in the name of Jesus. So we invite you here, Lord. Be here. Have your way. May your word go forth, and may your people be receptive to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. So Nicodemus. Nicodemus shows up at Jesus' house. Can you believe that? A Pharisee. Now, we don't know why Nicodemus showed up at Jesus' house. He's a Pharisee, and you know that the Pharisees have a contentious and hostile relationship with Jesus. You know, to put it plainly, they don't like him. They hate him. In Matthew chapter 12, they accuse the disciples of breaking the Sabbath day or breaking the Mosaic law because they cut down some ears of corn. They attributed Jesus' power to the devil. They said, you cast out demons by Beelzebub in Matthew chapter 12. They accused him of blaspheming in Matthew chapter 9. They questioned why he ate with tax collectors and sinners in Matthew chapter 9 as well. The Pharisees plotted, watch this, to kill him in Matthew chapter 12. And in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus rebukes the Pharisees. He says, woe to you teachers of the law, you Pharisees, you hypocrites, blind guides. Watch this. He calls them blind guides and blind fools. So there's a hostile relationship between Jesus and the Pharisees. And in the midst of this hostile relationship, Nicodemus shows up. He chooses to come to Jesus. He breaks away from the crowd of his Pharisees and comes to Jesus at night. And here's the interesting thing about Nicodemus. We don't know if he's a believer or not. Some people even argue that he's not a believer. They say, well, he was scared. He came at night. He valued man's opinion over God's opinion, so he never made it. But I don't know about that. Nicodemus shows up three times in the Bible. He's mentioned three times, and each time he's always doing something different than the other Pharisees. In this particular verse, he shows up out of nowhere in the middle of the night. And I don't know if that means he's not a believer because there's many people who we consider believers who did things at night out of fear of the consequences, like David. David escaped from Saul at night. Paul was let down by a basket at night. Um, And it says, out of fear of the Jews. 
So I don't think there's anything wrong with doing things in secrecy. So the fact that Nicodemus came, came at night doesn't disqualify him from being a believer. Then he shows up again in John chapter 7. This should be on your screen, starting at verse 44. Now, this is interesting. The Pharisees sent temple guards to arrest him. John chapter 7, starting at verse 44. The temple guards come back. The Pharisees are mad. They're like, why didn't you arrest him? They're like, no one has ever spoke like this before. Jesus spoke with such power that the temple guards couldn't arrest him. So they're mad. And in the midst of this hostile situation, watch what Nicodemus says. Verse 51, Nicodemus asks, does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has been doing? So what he's saying is, listen, we're not even keeping our own law. Because our law says we're supposed to hear this man out, but they didn't want to hear Jesus out because Jesus would put them to shame. Jesus knew the written code. He knew the written law. He was fulfilling the written law. And every time they would question him, he would put them to shame. So they didn't want to have this debate. The Pharisees would debate. The Pharisees would debate the Sadducees because there would be this back and forth about the law. The Pharisees would drag you out of your house if you broke the law, stand you in a courtyard and accuse you. And because they knew the law better than you did, you were guilty. They would barbecue you. And no one could stand up to, to them except for Jesus because he knew the law. And he knew that they weren't really keeping the law the way they were supposed to be. So they didn't want that. They didn't want to debate Jesus like they were supposed to do. That's what Nicodemus says. Does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has done? Now watch the reply. Now his Pharisee groups says, are you from Galilee too? Now this is an insult. They know that he's not from Galilee. They're basically saying, are you on the same team as him? Are you, you from Ohio too? That, that's the region. Okay, okay, you, you, you in cahoots with him now. So this statement separated Nicodemus from his fellow Pharisees. And it caused contention between him and his own group. So although it doesn't say he's a believer, I don't know. He, he's doing some things that's separating him from the group of unbelievers. Third time he shows up is at the burial of Jesus. Jesus is dead at this point. And John chapter 19, starting at verse 38, it says, Now after these things, Joseph of Arimathea, watch this, being a, a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one, for fear of the Jews. See? So he's a secret disciple. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say it's a bad thing. It's just what he is. He's a secret disciple. He requested the body from Pilate. Pilate granted him permission. Look at this. Now look who's there with Joseph, Nicodemus. And he brings a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 100 liters in weight. That's about 75 pounds. So we can say that Nicodemus has some money. He has some bread. He had, for, in order for him to have 75 pounds of spices. It wasn't like today where we can go to the Dollar Tree or we can go to Dave's supermarket and, and, and get some cayenne pepper or get some cinnamon. They had to travel. They had to go and trade. They had to go and bargain. And you had to have some money in order for you to get these spices. We hear stories about voyages to get spices. I think Christopher Columbus was coming here to get spices. They had to go different places because certain regions had different spices. And so this costs a lot of money. So we could say that Nicodemus probably had some money. He was well off. So let's get to our story in John chapter 3. Nicodemus shows up at night. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. I'm going to use my imagination. He knocks on the door, wakes up Jesus. Jesus comes to the door, lets him in. And now they're having a conversation. And Nicodemus starts off the conversation by saying, we know, we know that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And this is interesting. Nicodemus starts off the conversation with Jesus by revealing the secret hidden thoughts of the Pharisees. That we strongly implies that that, that is his Pharisee group. So what he's saying is we, we accuse you in public, but privately when you're not around, we, we know who you are. 
We accuse you of being the devil, but we know that God has sent you. Although we publicly malign you, we actually believe that you are from God, even though we won't say it publicly. So he reveals the secret of him and his Pharisee group. He says, we know. We know that you have come from God. This, this is a bombshell. Because the Pharisees will not say this publicly. But Nicodemus reveals the secrets of him and his group. He also reveals that the Pharisees knew God and they knew that Jesus was the Messiah. So there's really not a question about who he is in the Pharisees' mind. Jesus proved it. He says, no one can do these signs. Jesus did signs. He did miracles. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. All these signs they knew. They said, you know what? It's a done deal. This man is from God, but they wouldn't say it. Now watch Jesus' response to Nicodemus in verse 3. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now wait a minute. You guys see anything funny about this or different or peculiar? Nicodemus didn't say anything about the kingdom of God. He didn't say anything about being born again. He just revealed the secret thoughts of him and his Pharisee group. He says, we know. Nicodemus never mentioned the kingdom of God. But they were right. They were right about Jesus. He was from God. He was a teacher from God. So this verse implies, you might want to write this down if you're taking notes. They could see God. They knew God. And they knew his Messiah. But just because just because you see God doesn't mean that you can see the kingdom. I'm going to say that again. Just because you see God or know God does not mean that you can see the kingdom. The Pharisees could see God. They know. You know what? Here's God. You are his messenger. We understand that. But seeing the kingdom. Here's another note. Seeing the kingdom of God is different than knowing who God is and who his Messiah is. Seeing the kingdom of God is different than knowing who God is and who his Messiah is. See, God's glory is everywhere. The heavens proclaim his glory. The sun sits in the sky. When you step out out of your house every day, you see the sun in the sky. The sun is saying, hallelujah, God is here. The moon at night saying, hallelujah, God is here. The ocean roars God's praises. The grass shows the evidence of God. Everything you see shows the evidence of God. The wind that touches you shows the evidence of God. The the trees that sway in the wind, they wave their hands and they give God praise. Creation sings the praises of God. So God being evident is a no-brainer. They knew God. We all know God. There's, There's not a person... On this earth that can say, I don't know God. God is evident all around us. And the Pharisees knew God. And the Pharisees knew who his Messiah is. So the question is, what is the difference between knowing God and seeing the kingdom, right? That's the big question. They knew God. They knew the Messiah. But he says, hey, you can't see the kingdom unless you are born again. So you might want to write this down. What is the difference between knowing God and seeing the kingdom of God. Well, let's break down what a kingdom is. A kingdom has a ruler, right? Or rulers. In this case, there's one ruler, right? The kingdom has rules, laws that you have to abide by. The kingdom also has an economy, right? Commerce, currency. A kingdom also has land, domain. A kingdom also has people, right? All these things are involved in a kingdom. So you can know God, but not know the kingdom of God. You can know God, but not see the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God has rules, economy, currency, commerce, land, domain, people. All these things are just happening in this move. If you look at a kingdom, a kingdom is not dormant. A kingdom is moving. Traffic is moving. Governors are doing things. Mayors are doing things. People are going to work. People are doing stuff. They are banning the law. People are getting taxed. They have to pay taxes. All these different things are take, take place in a kingdom. So you can see God. You can see evidence of God. But you can only see the kingdom if you are born again. Yes. 
It's the details of God. It's the details of the kingdom, how God moves, how God operates, what he desires, where he lives, what he expects from you, what he wants. All these things are wrapped up in the kingdom so you can know of God, but you can't see the flow of the kingdom. You can't see God moving. You don't know what he wants. You don't know what he needs. You just know he exists. This is why you can't see the kingdom. So in the worldly kingdom, let's talk about the earthly kingdom. There's a way to advance in the earthly kingdom, right? Here on earth, who's the strongest? Who's the richest? Who's the smartest? Who invested their money wisely? Who owns land? Who has guns? Who has the biggest guns? Who has the bombs? Who has the biggest bombs, right? Who received their PhD? Who didn't finish high school? Police, governors, presidents, wars, all these things are in the earthly kingdom. And this is how you advance. Who's the biggest? Who's the strongest? Who's the richest? This is the earthly kingdom. Well, God has a kingdom as well. He has a ruler. It's him. God is the ruler. He has rules. That's the word of God. That's the Bible. And, and watch this. Inside the word of God, inside the Bible, are the details of the kingdom. How the kingdom operates, how the kingdom flows, the rules, the taxes, the commerce, the, 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 the economy of God is written inside the Bible. And the currency, the thing that God accepts is faith. That's the currency of the kingdom of heaven. Faith. In, in the worldly economy, we accept money, right? Which can, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. What can you do for me? You do for me, I do for you. But in God's economy, faith is what gets get things flowing. Faith is what gets things going with God. If you want God to respond, he responds to faith. He responds to you believing. And that's the currency of God. That's the invisible qualities of God. And also there is a land, domain. Heaven is his domain. And guess what else is his domain? Your heart. Also, God makes his house in your heart. He makes his room in, his, his, in your heart. He makes his place in your heart. He makes his domain in your heart. And there's a fight also. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It should be on your screen. Your screen. It says, for our struggles is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness. Watch this. In the heavenly places. So there's a kingdom, and there's a kingdom at war as, as well. Just like we cut on our news, CNN, Fox, whatever side you land on, there's wars going on. And sometimes it's kind of depressing. Me and my wife, we try to watch the news as much as possible. But we just start crying and just got to cut it off. It's just too much. Everybody's at war. It's floods everywhere. It's floods and burning at the same time. On this side of the street, it's flooding. On, this, on the other side of the street, the whole thing is just burning up. It's like, oh, my God, what is going on in the world? There's so much activity going on. But there's also activity in the heavenly realm, in the heavenly kingdom. And there's a fight in the heavenly places. So to see the kingdom... It's to know and understand the details of the kingdom. You guys can write that down if you want to. To see the kingdom is to know and understand the details of the kingdom. The kingdom of this world is not the same as the kingdom of God. See, I can describe the kingdom, and I try to, right? I try to describe the kingdom. But the only way to see the kingdom is for you to be born again. You have to be born again. The Pharisees knew God but they cannot see the kingdom of God. So when, when Nicodemus comes to him, maybe he came for a debate. The Pharisees love the debate. So maybe Nicodemus came to talk to Jesus. Like, let's talk this out. I want, I'm going to say something, you say something back to me. And maybe in the course of us um, conversing, you can teach me the kingdom, but he stops him. No, 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 no. This is not about a conversation, Nicodemus. But this is about a change. This is not about a conversation, but it's about an experience with God. Do you want to have an experience with God? I can try to teach you, but your brain may not be able to comprehend it. it are you willing to be born again? Are you willing to believe? And if you believe, you can be born again, and then you can see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus may have came to talk, but Jesus is like, listen. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. You got to believe. You got to be born again. I can't sit up here and talk to you about it. You got to be born again in order for you to see it. The evidence of God. Here's another, here's another quote that I think is worth writing down. So he sees the evidence of God. 
He says, we know. We saw the signs. We saw everything you did. And now we know for a fact that God sent you. So he saw the evidence of God. The evidence of God is an invitation to come see the kingdom of God. He saw the evidence of God. And then he showed up because the evidence of God is an invitation to come see the kingdom of God. Well, let me put it like this. When you see God, when you see the sun, when you see the moon, and when you see God working in all these different areas, you see the ocean, and you hear the gospel, and you see people praising, you see all the evidence of God, well, you know God is real. And that, that, that's an invitation to you. Now you need to come. You know that there's something greater than you. There's something more powerful than you, but you don't know what it is. You're like, wow, how is the sun sitting up there? Whoa, how is the moon sitting up there? How are the stars sitting up there? How about all these things happening? It is an invitation for you to come. Come on, there's something greater than you. Come see the kingdom of God. Come have an experience. It's an invitation for you to be born again. When you see the proof of God, it's proof that there's another realm that you know nothing about. When you see the sun sitting up there, you're like, well, there's something out there that, that I don't know anything about. I need to find out what it is. So Nicodemus shows up and he knocks on the door and says, wait a minute, let's talk this thing out. And he, and he sneaks at night. He don't want his Pharisee friends to see him. He's like, wait a minute. I, I have to go further because Nicodemus could have stayed at home. He, we know he got money, right? He got a nice house. He's there. He's comfortable. He could have been sipping hot cocoa, but he sneaks out at night because he knows there's something. There's something to you that I don't quite understand. I don't get. So I need to, there's something that I'm seeing, but I'm not seeing. There's something that's there, but I'm not getting it. I I need to go further. So Jesus stops him and says, hey, you can't see it unless you are born again. People are okay with you believing in God. If you say, "I, I believe in God, people are okay with that. But when you start to invest in the kingdom, then they start to look at you weird. People are okay with you saying, I believe in God. But when you start to invest your life in the kingdom, then they start to look at you funny. Why? Because they can't understand the king. They can't see the kingdom of God. When you begin to sacrifice for the kingdom, when you would rather be alone rather than to go out and get drunk with your coworkers, they don't understand that. How does that make sense? Because you're investing yourself in the kingdom. When you're reading your Bible too much, they're like, they don't take all that. Come on now. Come on, it don't take all that. You can, I, I go to church too every now and then, but you're reading every day. Come on now. When you're fasting and you're setting aside a meal so you can be closer to God, that's the kingdom. You're investing into the kingdom of God. They can't see it. You can say, I believe in God. Like, okay, you can say it. But when you start investing and acting like a kingdom person, they don't understand it. Why? Because they cannot see the kingdom of God because they're not born again. Is this okay, saints? Amen. Because you're part of a different kingdom and you're part of a different economy. This is why Jesus said in Matthew 6, do not store, sorry, verse 19. Matthew 6, verse 19. Some of you might want to turn or you can look at it on your screen. Do not store for yourselves treasure on earth. Watch this. Where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store for yourselves treasure in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So there's a difference between earthly treasure and heavenly treasure. And when you start to invest your, your, your earthly treasure for heavenly treasure, then that's when people don't understand. They say, I don't understand that. You have gone too far. You, you, you're too religious. I remember I held an event. My, my grandmother's house was a mess. And, and I, I, so I invited my whole family. I said, come on, we're going to clean grandma's house. You know, I was newly, I came back to the Lord, you know, uh, a couple years. And I'm listening, you know, to, to godly music. And, and all I listened to was Christian and gospel music. So they came, but the caveat was I controlled the music. So they came and I had Christian music blaring. And, and one of the family friends <laughs> looked at me and she said, now, Dave Lyon, I know you're Christian, but can we listen to some other music? <laughs> and in her mind, she's thinking like, okay, we get it. It don't take all that. She didn't understand. This is the music I listen to. I tried to listen to other music. I tried to listen to Drake. I can't relate to him. What he's after, I'm not after. I tried to listen to Future. 
We are living two different lives. I'm not after the things that these people are after. I'm on a whole different path. I can't relate. I listen to music that I can relate to. I listen to music that get me to love God. This is my life. I'm not putting on a show. This is just what I relate to. But in people's mind, when they're not born again, they're like, I don't get it. You're, you're too invested. I get going to church because, you know, sometimes, you know, it's good music there. You know, you get a cracker and some juice there every now and then. You know, I, I get that. And you feel good every now and then. But I don't get the deep investment. So he says you have to be born again to see the kingdom of God. So then Nicodemus, I got to go. I'm sorry. Let's just try to move forward. <laughs> Nicodemus asks the most logical question. He says in verse 4, John chapter 3, verse 4, how can a person be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless someone is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, The question is, what is being born of the Spirit? What is it? How does it happen? Well, to demonstrate this, I want to talk about what's being born of the flesh. I'm going to need Pastor LaVert and Sister Kelly to come on up and their lovely daughter to come on up. I want to demonstrate something for you, if you don't mind. What is being born of the Spirit? Now, we know what being born of the flesh is, right? Two people get together, they, they have a baby. All right, so we're gonna, you know, come on up. Now, when you come up, I, I want you, Pastor LeVert, to come on this side, right. and I want you to hold both arms out like this. Now, turn this way for me. Mm-hmm. All right, Sister Kelly, step over to the side like that, and I want you to hold two arms like that. And then, can y'all meet in the middle? <laughs> All right, good, 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 good. And who's oh, sorry, what's your name? Gabby. Gabby. All right, all right, Gabby, you're right here. You're not born yet, okay? (laughs) All right, so we know what a flesh human birth is. Two people come together. I like you, you like me, let's get married. And they come together in a union, in a physical union, and then from that union, you can come on through. A child is born, come on through, you gotta, come on, you gotta be born now. Can you say wah? (laughs) Wah? A child is born. That, you can put your hands down now. Just stay right here, though. I'm going to still need you. That is a human birth. Two people come together. From that union, a person, a human being, is born. Now, what is a spiritual birth? Well, let's look at 1 Peter. Stay right here. 1 Peter 1.23. Should be up on your screen. Is it on your screen? Give me a thumbs up. Good. It says, for you have been born again, not of seed, which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through, watch this, the living and enduring word of God. All right. So now, uh, Pastor LaVerse, step on your side. Now, when I, when, now you step on your side. Y'all guys, you guys want to meet again in the middle. No, no, she stay there. You stay there. All right. Now, Pastor LaVert, here, you can go back over there, Gabby. Pastor LaVert represents... The living and enduring word of God, a.k.a. the spirit, because, you know, the word of God is the spirit of God and the spirit of God is God himself. So when I say preach, I want you to do like this. Put your hands back out like you did before. Both hands, both hands. So they have an interaction with the word of God. The word of God comes forth. Go ahead. Preach. (laughs) So the word of God comes forth. Now, Kelly has an experience with the word of God. She hears the word of God, but she has a choice, just like she had a choice to marry her husband. She has a choice to walk away or to believe in the word and the spirit and the God who interacted with her. The word of God came for this is the the living and enduring word. If you can keep that verse up for me, this is the living and enduring word of God, the incorruptible, imperishable seed that goes forth. Now, when when you believe, you make that connection. Now, go ahead and believe. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connect with them again. Yeah. There you go. Y'all connect. Yeah, there you go. Y'all can hold hands. Hold it up. Good. Now, there's a connection. The, the living and enduring word of God came forth. And Jesus already said in verse uh, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever what? Believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. So now she represents Kelly. You represent Kelly. This is her. When you make that connection of faith with God, Kelly, you hold it up as you can. This is Kelly right here, guys. A new Kelly comes for go through. A new Kelly comes forth, and now the old Kelly is passed away, and the new Kelly has been born again. And that is, that's the best I can put it, of what it means to be born of the Spirit. There's a connection, there's a union between God and man, and a new person comes forth from, and, and when she comes forth, she comes forth into eternal life. Like Pastor said last week, it's not something you're looking forward to. It's something that you have. This is a new her that's now of the spirit, a spiritual human being. Thank you, guys. You can go back to your seat. Born again. You have to be born again. That is the born again experience. Everyone in here, you have to have the born again experience. We have to be careful with the word Christian. I like the word Christian, but you have to be careful with it because it's not about becoming a Christian, but it's about being born again. The born again experience is the only way to enter the kingdom of God. Have you been born again? Now, there's somebody on your row. If you feel comfortable, can you, can you please look at the, the person on your row? Look at them. Now, I, I, I want you to ask them a question, okay? God loves them, don't worry, so you, you, you can love them too. Look, look at the person on your row, and I want you to ask them, have you been born again? Go ahead. That's the question, amen? That is the question. Have you been born again? Only way to see the kingdom of God is you have to be born of the spirit. You have to have a spiritual connection with God. When God comes to you and he, he gives you his word, he presents himself, and you believe that word and you are born again. You can call yourself a Christian all you want, but if you haven't been born again, you are missing something. You can be a nice person and not be born again. You can give money to charities and not be born again. You can be a patient and quiet person and not be born again. You can be non-confrontational and not be born again. Watch this, you can join a church and not be born again. You can have two parents who are Christians and not be born again. You can go to church your whole life and not be born again. And watch this. this. This might mess some of y'all up. You can go down in the water and not be born again. Some people say, I went down in the water. Hey, listen, if you have not believed, if you have not made a connection with God, if you have not received God into your life, if you have not believed him, you have not been born again. If you have not received and believed Jesus when he came to you, if you have not received the spirit when it came to you, if you have not had a conversation and an interaction with the enduring living word of God, then you have not been born again. You have to be born again. I don't want anyone here to miss it. You can get dressed up. You can put on hair and makeup, all those things, and look the part. But it's the born again experience. Without this experience, you're just going through the motions. So I'm going to recap real quick, and I'm going to close it out. If you can put the recap up. And so I'm going to want to leave you guys with three points. And I put it on my PowerPoint, but I didn't put it on my notes. I want you guys to read it for me. So the first point I want to leave you is number one. Can we all read it together? Right. So you can know God. They knew God and not see the kingdom of God. Number two. Of the spirit. That is the only way 
to see slash enter because entering is seeing. Entering is seeing. You, you, can't, you can't see unless you enter. You know, um, you, you have to be inside to really see. Number three. Right. That means you have to have an interaction with the living word of God, God's spirit, and believe and receive him into your heart. So now I want you to do one more thing for me. You have someone on your row again. I want you to just look at them one more time. Look at them one more time. And now I want, to, I want you to ask them a very important question. Ask them, have you been born again? Thank you. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap for a great word from a great brother. We appreciate that word. And um, I think one of the things that I appreciate from uh, what my brother shared is that uh, this is bigger than just getting head knowledge. Uh, it's bigger than just uh, checking off a list. Uh, unless you are born again, <laughs> you won't see God. You got to have an experience. And my brother said it so well, have you been born again? At the end of the day, the fundamental question that we have for anybody that comes through our door is not, would you like to join our church? As important as that is, and we certainly invite anybody to join our church. It is not how much Bible knowledge you have, and certainly we encourage you to read the Bible. It is not how well you can sing, and hopefully you can sing better than me and Dave Long. Neither one of us can sing, right? The fundamental question that we have for anyone that comes to our door is, have you been born again? Because as my brother said, you can be a church member and not born again. You can know the Bible and not be born again. You can sing like the best of You can sing and not be born again. And so I do want to put that challenge out to all of us. If you have not been born again, you can do it today. Uh, you can do it by embracing Christ as Savior and Lord. You do what Nicodemus did. Nicodemus had enough sense to know to go to Jesus. You could come to Jesus. He's available to you. And I want to invite anyone that's here today, if you have not received Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life, whether you're at home or if you're viewing this, if you're viewing this from home or if you're in-house, I want to invite you. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. On the day you hear his voice, don't harden your heart will respond to it and surrender your life. And so I'm going to pray for us, and I'm going to offer up a prayer. Please understand there's nothing magical or mystical about the prayer. The prayer just gives you some words to express a sentiment to God. You may be like, I don't know what to say to God. I don't know what to say. Let me give you a suggestion. Because if you're going to come to God, you got to come to God, come before God right. Let me give you a suggestion. And if you really mean this, at the end of service, come see us. And we would love to help you process that a little bit more. Uh, but let me just pray for us. Father, we thank you for this time that we've had. Wow, to be in your word. What a blessing. What a blessing to be able to feast off the word of God. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your word. And Father, we pray, Lord, that the things that we talked about, the things that were discussed, the things that we reflected on this morning, the challenge that was given, all that happened this morning, God, we pray that we will reflect on those things. And we thank you, Jesus, that you came on the rescue mission. And you came so that we could be born again because we were all born in sin. But thank you, dear God, that, it, it, that we could be born again because in order to be with you, we have to be holy. And none of us in our corrupt nature is holy. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In our nature, God, we fall short 100% of the time. But we thank you that through the Spirit, through the offer of salvation through Christ, we can be born again. And we can have a new nature. 
And we can have, as my brother pointed out, we can have eternal life right now. Thank you for that. Your head is bowed, your eyes are closed. If you want to give Jesus your life today, you say, I want to be born again. Right where you are at, let me offer you a prayer that you can pray to him. Simply say, dear God, I realize that I am a sinner. Let me just say, as as a parenthesis, it's important for you to acknowledge your sin because you can't come to God thinking you can add anything. You got to realize how corrupt you are. So you say, dear God, I realize I'm a sinner, but I realize that Jesus Christ died for my sin, that he was raised from the dead, and one day he's coming back, and I want to be with him. Say, God, as best I know how, I give my life over to Jesus, and I receive him as my Savior and Lord. You tell God that, and if you really mean it, if you really mean it, like my brother said, you don't want to be all secretive about it. If you really mean it, come talk to us. Let us process that. Let us walk you through that a little bit more on a more personal level to help you think through that prayer. Father, again, we thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this time. We bless you, God. We honor you, God. We just love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we all stand, please, to uh, receive the, the benediction as we get ready to wrap up our time? I just want to remind uh, all of the ladies, uh, please, if you can, give us a few minutes of your time post-service. Uh, we're going to meet upstairs in the fellowship area. If you don't know where it's at, you can ask. Somebody in here knows where the fellowship area is at. If they don't know, ask somebody else. If they don't know, they ask somebody else. And if they don't know, then shame on us because we're not giving good directions on where to go. Uh, but right upstairs is the fellowship area. I uh, want to encourage you, please, to come and uh, meet with us. Uh, we're trying not to keep you too long. We just want to share uh, some things with you. So just want to remind you of that. And also, please get the word out next Sunday. We're trying to party, y'all. Uh, We're trying to have a good time as we celebrate 11 years. Get the word out. Let your cousins and them know. Let everybody on your block know. If if there are some people that's normally here at church that's not here today, call them. Let them know. We want you in the house next Sunday uh, because we want to celebrate 11 years. Isn't that something worth celebrating? 11 years? Oh, my goodness. Man, we've come... Long, we've come a distance, and God has been faithful every step of the way. So please, next Sunday, make sure that you're in-house if you can uh, be in-house to um, celebrate with us. Father, we thank you so much for this time that we've had. We bless you, God, and we love you. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory both now and forevermore. And all the other God's people said amen. Amen. God bless you. Ladies, we'll see you upstairs. Thank you guys so much.